Hey guys, it's Mr. Lin here. Today we are going to be learning how to do a remix of your own school portrait. And just to start at the end, it might look something like this, or like this, or like this, or this, or this, or this. So you guys can see like, um, these all look a little bit different, but they start the same, and they start with your own school picture that we take here at high school, which you know starts out as something kind of boring, it's just for the purpose of identification. We're going to make it tell a story about who you are. So what we're going to do is go onto our class website, <clears throat> and actually switch to the graphic design page, and scroll down the long list of assignments here. About halfway down, you'll find the school portrait remix there, and you should be able to find your picture to download. So you could click on it and pull it uh, onto the desktop here, or say save, uh, save picture as, if that comes up for you. Otherwise you can kind of pull it onto the desktop like this. Um, the other thing that might be useful here is for you <clears throat> to click on this link to some notes. These are actually my lesson plan notes, so they're not comprehensive, like step-by-step -step instructions, but it might uh, jog your memory into what to do next, because um, I'll be teaching this to you guys in class as well. So the next step would be to open your school portrait in Photoshop, and I have got a folder with my school portrait and any other images or files I might be using for this right here. So I'm simply going to drag this into the Photoshop icon on the dock and it opens up like so. Now you'll notice yours is really low resolution. It's a small file. Um, so the first step we're going to do, and you can actually see this one in the notes that I just directed you to, is to upsize the file. So it's going to be 11 by 17 inches because that's the size of paper we're going to print it on. And then 300 pixels per inch is the resolution. So the very first step you're going to do is come in here and say image, uh, image size, and then change this to 300. Make sure these two units say inches and change that one to 17. As long as this one's bigger than 11, which probably will be like 12 or something, then you're fine. So click OK. It'll get way zoomed in. And I scanned my photo so it's going to look a little cleaner than yours. Yours still look a little pixely, but it doesn't matter because the next step's going to take care of that. So the first thing we're going to do is unlock this guy, double click it, say OK so we can do stuff to that layer, and then hit a Command J, or you can also say Duplicate Layer. Um, so we get three of those, so we can try this a couple different ways. We're not just stuck with the, the first version. So on this top layer, the one that says layer zero copy two, I'm going to apply a filter. And there's lots of different filters here that do kind of cool effects to photographs. The one we're going to start with is the one under the artistic menu, and it says cut out. This is going to make this thing look kind of like a stencil image. Um, it's, it's a big operation, so it takes a sec for this to appear, and I have to zoom out because it's kind of zoomed in on me at the moment. If you've ever seen the, uh, the visage of the communist leader Che Guevara, you may have seen this image on a t-shirt before, not really knowing what you're looking at. We're kind of trying to make it look similar to something like this, to just kind of simplify it. That way we can pick out the different parts and paste things into them. So coming back to Photoshop, you could play around with the number of levels and the edge simplicity a little bit um, to make it look uh, good to your vision. But once you kind of have it the way you want it, go ahead and click OK, and that filter will then be applied. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is cut out the background here. So I'm going to use the Quick Selection tool to select myself. Remember, you can increase the size of the Quick Selection tool using the bracket keys. Or under the options menu, you can come down here and increase the size of the brush or the hardness or softness of the brush that way as well. Uh, so I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger, maybe like the size of a pencil eraser would probably work pretty well for you. And then come around like this. If you, if you mess up and you end up getting a little too much, let's say you come back into this area like that you can hit the option key and you'll notice that the center of the brush becomes a minus instead of a plus so I can subtract 
from that. And I was kind of trying to make it look like my ear was there a little bit like that. Okay, um, once I've got that, I'm going to inverse the selection. Because if I hit delete right now, I'm just going to delete my face. But I want to actually delete the background and not my face. So in order to do that, I'm going to say select inverse. Or you could right click and say select inverse. Or you can hit command shift I, which is the shortcut key. And then you can delete it. And then it's gone there. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is further simplify this, is just kind of throw on uh, a couple adjustment layers. And the first one is just make it black and white. I'm going to go back and throw on this one that's called the levels adjustment. You guys are familiar with that from just adjusting contrast to normal photographs. We call it, refer to it as a histogram. So I'm going to kind of do this punch out some of the grays so it's mostly a black and white image. You can have some black and whites, or so, sorry, some middle grays or mid-tones, but I'm kind of mostly trying to get rid of those things. And then I'm going to come down here. I'm going to close this so I can see my full layers panel. I want these adjustments to only apply to that layer, so I'm going to throw a clipping mask like this. I'm right-clicking and saying clipping mask. You see these little arrows up here. That means that the black and white adjustment and the levels adjustment only apply to this layer, won't affect anything else. Um, right now we have this checkerboard in the background that just kind of means it's transparent. Just uh, just for aesthetics for the moment, I'd like something back there. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to do that twice um, by clicking this button right here. And then I'm going to fill that with something just so it's not just empty. I'm using the paint bucket tool here and I could fill it with black or in this other layer here I could just you know switch to white and fill it with white just so that there's something back there um, and you could choose other colors in black or in white too but right now it's just a matter for me it's just a matter of putting something back there so that it's not simply empty so you can kind of see how those layers sort of uh, interact with each other Oops, that one is, there we go. I was going to show you I can move that around and it's like doing things. You know, I could transform it and make it into kind of like a diagonal thing too, just to have some kind of graphic element happening back there if I wanted to. Not a requirement. I was just kind of showing you how to put something behind yourself there. I think I'm just going to leave it white for simplicity at the moment. All right, moving on. The next step, and this is kind of getting to the core of the matter here, the crux. Uh, of, of this assignment is to choose parts of this, copy and paste them, and then add what's called a clipping mask with another image to kind of paste that inside. So what I'm going to do is use my selection tool and select part of my, of my face and make sure I'm on this layer here. I'm going to actually go back to a hard edge on this. I think it's kind of messing up my selection a little. That's why my cheek is kind of missing there. All right, so getting a small brush, zooming way in, and going kind of like so has allowed me to kind of select my hair there. I didn't really want to get the eye, so I'm hitting the minus on that and kind of backing off that. Maybe I'll have my ear be a separate thing and maybe come up a little higher with this or something like that. So I've got this hair shape selected. Now, I would go on to Google and look for an image that sort of I thought represented me or who I was or something. Maybe I like sunsets or maybe I like mountains or, you know, try to make this be, be something that tells a specific story about you. And the thing I want you guys to be aware of while you're searching on Google is these numbers right here that says 1200 by 852. That's the resolution of the image. I wouldn't choose one of those that was less than a thousand in at least one dimension. If you want to, you can search for, uh, by large images only. You won't get the same results, but you only get large images, which might be helpful. So there's that. I already selected some images. So what I'm going to do is copy with the command C and paste this, or you can do it the slow way and say copy and then say edit, paste, um, like that. You'll notice there's a little new hair layer there. So you'll notice there's a new hair layer right here 
Um, because of where it is, it's kind of part of this clipping mask thing. So I'm just going to release the clipping mask there, move that on top of everything else. And then I've already selected an image that I'm going to put in here. So I'm going to use this kind of ocean sunset thing. I'm going to just pull that right in. When you first pull it in, it gives you the option to size it. Remember the golden rule here of scaling things in Photoshop is hold shift and drag only from the corners so your length and width don't get distorted. I want to make that at least as big enough that's going to fit into that hair layer. So the key thing to remember here is that this sunset layer has to be right above the kind of extra hair layer that I created in Photoshop. And then when I throw a, a clipping mask on this way, the hair gets kind of pasted, or sorry, the sunset layer kind of gets pasted into that uh, hair shape that we created uh, with the clipping mask there. So I can kind of move that around. I can make it bigger or smaller again. I can rotate it even if I needed to or felt a reason to do that and kind of position it in a way that I think looks good. The other thing I want to show you guys about doing this is you can actually put another image into there. So if I have like this kind of ocean clouds image and I put that in there, I can also apply a clipping mask to this. And you'll see there'll be actually two images into that same hair shape because they both with this little arrow are kind of clipped by this shape. Let's say though I want to kind of like fade between one and an another to make it kind of a little more sophisticated and a little softer on the edges. So I want those clouds, but I just want those on the top. What I can do is add a red, so called a regular mask, and that's this little button right here that says add layer mask. You'll see that's represented by the white icon or the white rectangle next to the layer icon in the layers panel here. Um, you have to, for this to work, you have to have that selected. You can't be here or on a different layer or something. You have to be not only on this layer, but have the mask selected here. Then I'm going to take my paintbrush tool. I'm going to make sure that my, col my colors I have selected are black and white. If they are anything else, just hit the D button and it'll default back to white and black. And if you hit X on your keyboard, it toggles or switches back and forth between black and white. Since white represents what is revealed and everything of this photo is revealed right now, I want a black paintbrush and I want it to have a soft edge in this case. And you can change the size there or with the brackets. Um, I kind of like to do this with a really large brush because then the softness happens more gradually. So I can come in here and kind of paint it out and actually fade from my sunset into the clouds, uh, something like that. I can still come back and move this around and and do that sort of thing with it. But that's the way that you can kind of blend two images into one. So we're going to do that extensively throughout the whole image. So at the end of the day, you get something that might look like this. Or here's another version of it where we have some other uh, images kind of pasted in. Um, another thing I might throw out there is you see these kind of this wing layer on this one, which is... Ooh, got a lot of layers going here, don't I? Right here. You could also do what's called just standard compositing uh, in Photoshop. So say I just wanted to put something into this image, not necessarily with the clipping mask. Uh, I think that in the end that could provide, add some variety and interest. So let's say I wanted to put like a butterfly on my forehead or something like that. And I want it to be, I don't know, a monarch butterfly. I want it to be a high res one. Um, so I'm going to search with my tools by large images only, which I'm already doing. I like the look of this guy. I'm going to go ahead and say save image as. We'll put him um, beyond milkweed. I'm just going to call this guy Monarch. Good practice to name stuff, something you'll remember. Right now it's going on my desktop, but I would save that into your your school portrait remix folder so you don't lose track of it. So there it is. I'm going to put that guy in. And then for like a standard composite, uh, it's, you know, of course, easier to do this when you have just a simple white background because it's going to be selecting the image you want more quickly. Um, I'm going to show you the different way to do this than just to delete the background this time. And this is actually a more advanced, better way to do it because you don't lose the background completely. You can always get it back and kind of refine it. But I'm going to say refine edge, and then I'm going to say output to layer mask and click OK here. So that punched out the background for me without actually deleting it. It's there still. So then if I use my paintbrush like we were just a moment ago, I can actually get the, the you know, paint things in with 
white or paint them out with black and kind of refine my edge a little bit better that way. Um, but I'm just going to take it and kind of rotate it like this and then kind of make it a little smaller like so. So for whatever reason, I've got this kind of butterfly shape at my forehead or something. I don't know if that really works. Maybe, maybe my mouth or something instead. Not sure what that means. Or if you wanted to do kind of the wing thing like I was doing before, you just have to reposition this in the layers panel so it was behind my head instead. So I'm kind of coming down here so you can see there's that image of me. I could put it back here. Of course, the color disappeared from it there. And I think the reason for that is that there must not be the clipping ma mask on this anymore for some reason. So I'm going to reapply that so it only applies to the uh, image of my face here. So the color came back into the, the monarch wings there. So you could do something with those. Yeah, obviously I think this one needs some, some work. So that's the idea. Like pretend that the computer is a paintbrush in your hand. Um, from here on out, it's not like step-by-step -step instructions. You have to use your, your own creativity and your own artistic intuition to kind of create a, a cool image in the end. And this, this might take a few class periods and some serious uh, creative energy expenditure to arrive at something cool. So good luck and ask me for help with it as you need it. If you have something in mind and you're like, I want to do this, but I'm not quite sure how to pull it off, I can come and sit next to you and we can try to prob problem solve it together. All right, take it away, guys.